Welcome back to the channel folks and to another tutorial. You may have seen my Hungarian infantry and artillery um, tutorials recently so now it's time for some Hungarian armour with these lovely looking Zrinris if that's the correct pronunciation folks. Hopefully I'll do a better job of painting them than I will of pronouncing them. The Zinris would have been coloured uh, a sort of olive kind of green colour and then had the camel blotches added to it. So that is the way, the order I am going to paint the camel. So I've given it an undercoat of camel olive green and then I'm going to start to add the blotches. This way we're going to get a tank that doesn't look like a German tank. You know where you are starting with a, a, a yellow colour and then adding blotches to that. The overspray needs to be on top of the green, not on top of that yellow colour that you'll be familiar with a German tank, so don't fall into the trap of painting these as you would your Germans. So the second uh, blotch of camo there is um, flat earth. It's a nice saturated kind of brown, it's not too dark and it will therefore stand out quite strongly against the camo olive green. And now I'm moving on to a very bright colour which is tan yellow which is a very saturated kind of yellow again but it's not too bright, um, not too sparkly so to speak. And it's important here that we get the right balance between all three elements. Whoop, just cleaning the needle there folks. Now you, you want to keep your shapes in, in balance in terms of size and in terms of shape and you don't want to have one area dominated too much by these colour blotches. You want to ensure that you are leaving enough of that um, camo olive green base colour so that's still the dominant colour. So there's the airbrush and finish folks. Now I have to tell you this was a brutal experience for me today. When airbrushing goes well, you can fly through it. You know, once you've got a bit of experience, it's boom, 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 boom. One colour makes colour and it's great. Today my airbrush decided that it just wasn't going to spray yellow. I'm thinking, what's it got against yellow? But as I discovered, in the end, it wasn't just yellow. It was just struggling right across the board. Even the cleaner, it wouldn't spray the cleaner through. So it's very strange. I changed the nozzle however, put a brand new nozzle in and it was fine. I got it to work, no problem at all. So airbrushes, they can be really frustrating when they go wrong. You have to have a bit of a problem solving um, frame of mind to get to the root cause of it. Sometimes it just needs a clean and I certainly cleaned it in this case several times. Uh, took it to bits, cleaned it, but the nozzle is really quite old. <laughs> Um, um, a typical Scotsman, shall we say, I'm a bit tight and I think I've had that nozzle for about six or seven years in there. So it was probably due a change. Um, but you know, you get comfortable with how things are working and you stick with it. I could not stick with it anymore. It was a goner. So let's have a quick look at them before I do any work on the running gear or any varnish work with subsequent pin wash. So this, this is the sort of raw airbrushed look and I'm quite happy with how they've turned out in terms of the balance. Some of the airbrushing has gone a wee bit wonky. There's some that I've got just a bit too much camel blotches. Um, you can see as well on the, on the top it looks cool if I can get it in shot. That one looks not too bad, but it's, once again, it's maybe just a bit too much camel blotches because remember I wanted the green to be showing. That's an important uh, part of this. I want them to look as if they're green with camel blotches rather than German tanks. Um, so, ordinarily, a fairly straightforward job, even though there's 10 of them. Today, a bit of torture, but I'm there, guys. I can now move on. My next step, before I do the varnishing, is to paint tracks and running gear. 
so that I can varnish them, get the gloss varnish on and that's just the tracks protected um, from handling, from handling. So I'm going to show you that. It's not very exciting, but I'll just show you the basic process before we move on to that um, varnish and then the more interesting stuff, which is the pin wash. I'm using US Olive Drab and an old brush that's still got a half decent point on it to paint the tracks. This is the, the base colour for the tracks. It's a nice stony, earthy kind of colour that looks a little bit like mud. It's not too brown. It's not too grey. So just got to be careful. You know that there's going to be some mistakes at this point and we can fix that. But try and be as careful as possible. Don't worry about the underside of the track folks, we're not going to see that. Um, you know, I'm not painting the shoes and, or sure, I'm calling them shoes and the side plates on these guys. I like the look, the antiquated look of that uh, running gear. So I'm not going to be painting them. If you were adding the side plates, you could do a lot less work on the tracks. You know, you'll be able to see what is exposed and just concentrate on that. But there we go. We're just going to put a couple of coats around everywhere that's going to be visible you know, let it dry come back and do another coat and then the tracks will be ready for a, a bit of a dry brush with some metallics so it's on to the dry brush next once again using an old beat up brush but one not one that's too big because we're going to be working in some small areas here and the chances are we're going to make a bit of a mess but but try and make that mess on the the lower hull not on the camoed section because that will be easier to fix. So just very patiently work along and pick out all the details. Remembering people are going to see this from on top. I was hoping the wheels were all metal on these guys, but it seems they've got um, rubber rubber tires on them. So the laborious, time-consuming uh, process of painting lots and lots of little wheels. You know, so I I typically work sort of down one side then I turn the, the tank around and then work down the other side so I'm painting almost like half moons at a time but I'm in the right orientation um, as I'm doing that and then I can paint the flat surfaces not the facing surfaces but the flat surfaces and remember to get in between the wheels as well and uh, not just it not just on top but get in underneath it's a bit excessive perhaps but it will ensure that there's no base green colour showing. Now let's do a touch up on that lower hull area. You'll find that as you can maybe see there there's some overspray from when the camel was applied. There certainly will be some dry brush of that metallic uh, catching some of those wheels and then there's going to be some of the, um, the olive drab, some of the grey, you know, just get it tidied up folks. It doesn't, doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Don't have to worry too much about the rims on the wheels, you know, between them and the tyres. Just get it nice and tidy so it'll look good after a wash. So that's a gloss coat being applied as well, folks. So that we're now ready to apply the pin wash and the lower hull wash. So when I'm working with pin washes, I always use a palette, as you can see here. Doling out a, a workable amount of the, um, the dark wash that I'm using and then adding some thinner to it and then keeping a little pull of thinner uh, beside it for working the wash once it's on the mini and then we've got a really nice thin controlled wash we're not working straight out of the bottle where the results might vary quite considerably now you can see i'm very carefully just touching the brush against panel lines raised features recesses and such likes and the, the very, very thin and fluid enamel paint with the thinner is flowing around all these features. That allows us to get the shading on, but to a large extent, it prevents the flat surfaces from getting too dark. This paint can be washed off, but it will always leave a little bit of a residue. And if you wash it too much, you'll end up washing some of the base paint off as well. So working with thinners and the capillary action is a real benefit to keeping a bright finish. And here I'm using 
a clean brush just to go through and sort of push off any dark stains on the flat areas, push them off into the recessed areas or if there's too much you can just draw off the brush with the brush sorry and clean it on a paper towel and I'm using a little paper towel all the time as I'm working through this guys so that I've got complete control of what is on the brush and I don't end up just moving the the excess wash around unnecessarily so be patient with this folks you can get into a rhythm once you've got a bit of experience and you're comfortable with what you're doing don't rush it and certainly don't apply it this kind of wash over the entire vehicle or it's goodbye camo hello night camo I'm going to use an enamel wash on the lower hull once again but here you can see you can just slap it all over folks in this dark green kind of colour you can go quite heavy if you're using a lighter coloured background you want to be more careful with this and you can always draw off any excess with your brush and a paper towel to get the finished look that you're after. I add the decals after I've done the wash because it helps protect them against any damage from the, uh, from the enamel wash. You can see I've cut the large decal going across the engine cover in two I want a nice distinct line um, going through there as opposed to a white line that you would get from the decal and then we've got the side um, decal here now if you were using the side cuts this isn't important but here it is you cannot get behind the spade and the hammer so a little bit of quick paint work will, will solve that for us we're going to start with some um, off white it's better than white in this case just paint a little blob in there and then we're going to go to black and just roughly fill in below the, no using the black above as a guide fill in below that and you're going to create if you keep your line straight you're going to create a nice cross shape which will as we'll see create the impression that we've actually got a decal going right behind those um, tools there's not too much in the way of tools on these um, scenarios so uh, we're just going to just work through them being patient you can see me using greys instead of metallic colours on the metal parts so when I'll get a, a finished look which has got nice shiny objects on it that's not attractive and not necessarily very realistic either and then just remember when you're painting around all these things get around the sides even though it can be quite awkward you don't want under um, base colour uh, showing underneath in this case like the grey on the spare tracks this spare track has to be a three dimensional object with a top and a sides and where required a bottom as well and you can see very simple process just German grey with a highlight of London grey very small highlight catches the eye gives it a bit of metallic edge without creating a metallic sheen it also allows in the case of the tracks here for you to make the individual links stand out a bit more for the handles I'm using a base color which will be the shade of flat earth and then the main color which will stand out nice against most kind of backgrounds you will find on tanks is Panzerace's new wood now we have the very important highlighting process we have to be very patient when we're doing this folks we don't want to be dry brushing the tank but there's lots of raised areas like uh, rivets and such like where we need to do a bit of dry brushing now for the brown I'm going back to that new wood colour and just catching those raised, ed raised edges very carefully it will give a soft highlight that's not going to be too strong we don't want any of these highlights to be too strong for instance the tan yellow colour here I'm actually just using the tan colour it's it's not a highlight colour it's just the same colour but it stands out strongly against the shade that's on there so it works very well so as I said very patient you're not using a lot of paint here we're hitting raised areas and open edges you know we're not touching the edges of panels now we're using green grey 
for the green areas it also works well on the brown areas too because it's a nice generic kind of um, highlight colour uh, it works good on many of typical tank hull kind of camos and then we can work a bit more detail now using a better quality brush with a decent point on it work around hinges periscopes the edges of panels so that we're starting to create some contrast and some depth between the flat areas and the shaded areas but patience is very very much required here folks keep those lines small make sure the paint is flowing cleanly off the brush but not flowing too much that it ends up pulling on the edges it's got to just stick to where you put it without you having to drag it off there are a few other details to paint we've got the exhausts we could leave them uh, just this, this hull colour because it's a new vehicle but I like to uh, like to have rusty exhausts and I'll put, them in, I'll put the colours below that I've used here remember folks and let's get that muzzle looking a bit more three dimensional no need to drill it out just paint a black circle in there then there are the jack blocks on the front very simple here folks just get a shade colour a few stripes light and dark and they'll look the part now we're going to do some very very careful work with pigments to get a dusty and where appropriate streaky look to the upper hull to the fenders not touching the lower hull folks we've already got a wash on that and now you probably notice that you can hardly see the uh, pigment that's going on here pigment is really strong folks so don't go overboard and think if you can't see it when you're applying it that you won't see it when it dries because once it does dry you're really going to start seeing it now after you, I've let it dry I'm going to go through and work it again where required I'll take some off or I'll add some more on where you've got streaks that are too strong just work them into thinner lines where it's too much on a flat surface draw some away the fenders for instance you might just want to draw some of that out so it's a bit more dusty looking and a little less into the um, recesses where it's going to want to go now here you can see some once I've let it dry again some streaks some are good some are bad so the ones that are too strong are going to take the brush just draw it away draw it down get a thinner line something that's more controlled now this is going to look a lot softer under the matte varnish but it is still going to add to the overall dusty appearance of the vehicle the decals are not going to be quite so bright as well you know they're going to be a little bit dusted down not quite so black and white which will improve the overall look and it kind of acts to unify the surface a little bit more as well we don't want to spend too much time with products such as filters and so on that are going to darken the surface a light dusting like this is actually going to help brighten everything so these guys are ready for a coat of matte varnish before I do that I am going to move on to the crew though so I'm just going to give you a quick look at how I paint them once again the colours will be in the description below so here we go very quick job to get these crew done if you want to see more about how I paint crew and infantry and such like just have a look at the playlist painting flames of war playlist there's a lot in there um, you'll see it in much greater detail and understand the processes that I'm following much better but you can see these guys are just going to be nice and bright three of them one for each of the platoons and very quickly get them done to add a little bit of extra character so that's us done folks here's a few more still photographs there's uh, much more photographs on the facebook page as well if you want to have a look there thanks for watching hope you found it interesting and useful thank you to all the subscribers out there and if you've not subscribed and you'd like to do so please hit the button just to help me grow the community and get more of this kind of content out to people who enjoy the game and the hobby of flames of war